Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This week I am talking about a problem that every person who will learn a new language, each language, you will always go through this stage. It is called a language plateau. So I'm going to give some tips about how to get over them um, and I guess let's get started. So if you don't know what a language plateau is, it's a part in your language learning journey where you learn a lot like the first couple months and then all of a sudden you kind of hit this wall. <laughs> um, there are like two types that they talk about. They talk about short-term plateaus and long-term plateaus. So a short-term plateau is you learn a lot, say like your first six months to a year and then you hit this like two or three month period where you just got nothing. You've gotten past learning all the basic vocab and conjugations and now it's like this real world application and you're at this level where you can kind of understand it but not enough to speak it or you can like understand it pretty well but you can't speak it very well or read it very well. Like you can kind of keep up but you can't keep up all at the same time. And as for a long term language plateau, it is more like a you're doing really well for about a year and then you hit kind of like a month where it just feels like everything is just going to fall apart. <laughs> so here are my five tips I wrote down about language plateaus, which work for both short-term and long-term language plateaus. So let's get started. The first tip I have is to change your language style. And basically what this means is just to, if you're learning one way, then try and learn another. If you're focusing too much on grammar, maybe try and move to speaking or, strengthening your vocabulary or if you're kind of really focused on accents maybe you should just work on maybe re listening comprehension so just changing how you're studying a little differently so then you're not so geared towards what's getting you so frustrated i also know that a lot of people like studying in different settings so if they feel really frustrated with the language like say if they always study in the room maybe they'll study in the kitchen or maybe they'll go out and study at a cafe or something so also a change of location could really help if it's like a short-term language plateau or you just kind of feel stuck for like a week the second tip i have is probably one of the most obvious ones but it's that you're still making progress. Even though you can't see the little things because you're living with the language every day and you're living with your own learning every day, it doesn't mean you're not still doing well. It just means you're just not progressing in a way that you'd imagine you'd be progressing or it's just not as noticeable. Like growing your vocabulary isn't a very noticeable language progression, nor is kind of like listening to accents and listening comprehension. It's not exactly something noticeable until you hit a big milestone or a goal. I actually recommend with that one, realizing to help yourself realize that you're making progress, maybe video yourself or like speaking that language or write down a journal every day, maybe in that language and you'll probably learn some new vocabulary. And over a month or two months, you're gonna notice that you got a lot better. Because if you do something every day, say like write a journal about your day and say like Spanish or speak French every day for like 30 minutes, you're going to get a lot better at it. But you won't really notice, say like day one, day two, day three, day 25, day 26. But when you watch it back, when you watch day one, you're going to be like, wow, I'm a lot better. So that's a good way of keeping yourself on track, just like looking and it get, kind of gives you some perspective to make sure you don't feel like you're not getting anywhere because you always are. The third thing is to set mini goals, um, which kind of feeds in from my last one. So I'm not a big goal setter personally. I don't really like setting goals. I just kind of feel like it's kind of a little kind of just restricting. I kind of just like to see how it goes, but some people do set goals um, and just setting little short term goals, whether it's like, oh, you want to practice like 30 minutes a day this week, or even bigger goals, like I wanna be able to do a mini presentation in Spanish by the end of the month. Or, you know, by the end of this year, I wanna take a trip to Spain for the summer or something. You know what I mean? Like just like little or big goals you can set for yourself. So then you can kind of get out of your language plateau and have some motivation to work for something. The fourth thing that you could do is to find a language buddy. So I know a lot of polyglots um, slash language learners such as myself 
Um, we often study alone. Um, it's very common to study alone. Maybe you have a friend who speaks the language, but finding somebody who is also learning a language or even better, the same language could really help you because you guys can just buddy up, spur each other on, share each other's goals and aspirations in whatever language you're learning. You guys can study together. It's just a really good time to just have someone who understands what you're going through to learn the language or can help you through your plateau in unmotivation with their motivation. Also signing up for classes. Classes can be a very cheap alternative. I know I'm not a huge huge fan with starting off in language classes but when I get to a certain po point where I need some professional help taking a public class that's relatively cheap is something I do recommend. I really love taking classes in languages that I may need help with, like in ASL, I took classes to help with my ASL syntax and qualifiers, which has been very, very fun. Um, and also, again, just meeting language buddies and seeing people who are in the same boat as you are. There are also many public settings probably in your area. You could look for language exchanges, which is where a bunch of people who speak a bunch of different languages and are learning a bunch of different languages, they all meet at a central location and they basically just go back and forth um so it's like if you want to learn italian you may meet somebody from italy who's trying to learn like say russian um but they'll be more than likely to help you because you guys are all in the same boat and you guys all want to learn a language and you understand how hard that is to do um speaking from personal experience i went to a silent dinner for american sign language and it was so so fun to just be able to sign with people who are also learning how to sign and people who are hard of hearing and deaf. So it was super duper fun. It really ignited a passion of ASL that I knew I always had, but I just kind of felt like I lost that initial love of ASL. Um, but just knowing that there are people out there who want to sign and want to practice and learn languages just gives you an extra motivation to work even harder to get better. And my sixth and final tip, and it's not really a tip, but if worst comes to worst, if you feel like you just are really burnt out, take a week off. <laughs> I did this with Spanish. I felt so just burnt out. It was spring break and I remember I just felt so frustrated with the language and I just wanted to like quit. I was literally this close, like I was so tired. I was like, I'm tired of learning Spanish. I just feel like I'm not getting anywhere. I don't know enough to speak with people. I just I did not feel good about it at all. So I just took a week off. I thought spring break I was really gonna drill in some hours and I just lazed around all, all day and I was just so happy to have a break from like my own expectations and just textbooks and reading and reading and reading in Spanish. I just could just sit down and enjoy myself. And then the very next week I just had the energy again. So if all else fails, just give yourself some time because we are human, we make mistakes, we'll get frustrated, especially with something that takes a really long time. Language learning is a very long process. Usually the videos who are like, how did I learn a language in six months? They can learn to a conversational fluency, but actually being fully fluent in a language takes years. So those are my tips about how to beat the language plateau. If you liked this video, which I hope you did, Leave a like, leave a comment down there if you have any other language plateau tips or just any other ideas. And I hope to see you on Sunday. Bye. Goodbye.